And today I want to talk about living a life of faith that demonstrates this. And, and, and as I was thinking, uh, I, I, was, I was taken to the Apostle Paul. And, and the Apostle Paul is regarded as one of the most significant figures in the history of Christianity. He's one of my favorites. I'm not going to lie. He's, he's my favorite. Um, and Paul's early life was characterized by a fervent religious zeal and, and persecution of Christians. So the same passion he had to persecute Christians, he had even a greater passion to preach the gospel after he came to know that Jesus was indeed um, who he said he was. And however, following a transformative encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, he became a dedicated missionary and advocate for the faith he once opposed. And his life serves as a model of living f- by faith. As he navigated various challenges, and maybe some of you today are are navigating that, uh, challenges in your life. Uh, He navigated many hardships, and maybe you might be saying, yeah, Pastor Angel, I'm going through some hardships right now. And persecution while remaining grounded on the grace and love of Christ. And Paul's faith was practical and evident in his ability to endure suffering. How many of you love to suffer? Wow. Don't be lying. And But he persevered in his ministry and maintained his proud tr- trust in God's plan. His letters in the New Testament, including Romans, which if you want to study, uh, Monday Night Bible Study, Pastor Armando's doing Romans. Romans is an amazing book. You should sign up right now while I'm talking. Galatians, Philippians, and offer guidance for Christians today, highlighting both theological insights and the personal struggles of a man who was wholly committed to the gospel. And in Paul's example, we witness a life transformed by grace, strengthened by faith, and motivated by a desire to share the message of Christ to the world. And Paul, for me, was, as you can see here, for me, he was, um, can you put that picture up? He was the Terminator. (laughs) Um, He was the man. I mean, I felt like no matter what he encountered, he demonstrates the, the, that fear wasn't in him, that he was just, no matter what obstacle, no matter what he had to do, he did it. And no one stopped this guy. And if you're, you know, if you're a little young, you won't even know what I'm talking about. But the Terminator was the man back in the day, I'll be back, you know, our new Schwarzenegger. And, and what's radical faith? You know, and, and I, I was thinking, you know, what, 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 what is it about Paul's life that we can learn from? And, and radical faith, uh, he showed radical faith in the face of persecution. Paul's journey um, as a follower, was marked by an intense persecution. And he was in prison, he was beaten, he was stoned, yet his faith remained unwavering. And maybe this morning you're not, going, you're not being stoned, you're not being persecuted in that way, but, uh, but his faith remained unwavering, which is what God asks from us, that our faith remains the same no matter the circumstances in our life. Uh, that you remain steadfast in believing who God says he is. And he was unwavering, and, and, and his willingness to endure suffering for the gospel it shows us uh, a radical faith and trust in God's purpose regardless of the personal cost. Paul, the same way he went gun ho to persecute Christians, he went gun ho to preach the gospel. And no matter what was in his way, no matter what he lost, no matter what he had to give up, he was still going to do what God called him to do. Amen. That he was going to continue to move forward even if financially he wasn't secure. Even if there was maybe sickness, even if there were struggles, he was going to continue to be faithful to God no matter the circumstances because he knew that he served a God that was going to be with him through every step of the way. And Acts chapter 14, verse 20, and this is, this is why I call Paul the Terminator. Then, he's, then it says, then some Jews came to Antioch and Iconum and won a crowd over. They stoned Paul, dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. Now imagine that, getting stoned, getting beaten, getting thrown out of the city. But he gets up, and instead of continuing on his way, he went right back to the place in which he was, this happened to him. He showed determination that he, wasn't gonna, he was going to what? If you look at um, the next picture, he's back. He went right back to the place where, if you can see, I like the Terminator. He went right back to the place to which he just got stoned and beaten, which shows that he didn't, it didn't matter the circumstances. He went right back to the place which he started preaching, and even though they stoned him and beat him, he showed faith that I'm going to continue to do this, which demonstrates to us, you know what? No matter what's happened in your life, no matter where you've been, no matter what uh, st- setbacks you've had, you can be just like Arnold Schwarzenegger today in faith, and you can say, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I, I don't care what, what happened. I, 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 may, I maybe have down for a while. Things might have happened in my life, but I'm going to show this radical faith, and I'm going to come back 
and I'm going to show you in whom I trust. And Paul's radical faith demonstrated through resilience after, sto- after being stoned and nearly to death, he immediately returns to continue preaching the gospel. And he trusted that his life was in God's hands and no amount of persecution could deter his mission. So I want you to know that you are in God's hands. Those who trust in God, the psalmist says in Psalms 34, 7, that those who trust in God, those who fear God, the angel of the Lord encamps around them and will defend them. I want you to know that God is surrounding you. We just sang that song, right? I'm surrounded by you, right? That God is with you no matter what. If you trust in God, no matter what circumstances you are facing, if you can demonstrate, God, I'm going to trust you in this, the worst darkness of my time in my life, even in my sickness, when doctors say, I don't know what's wrong with you, or when doctors say there's nothing that can be had, that there's nothing that I can do for you, you're going to stand firm and say, God, I trust you. I believe in you. Even if I am not healed, I believe that you are a healer. Even though I don't have that peace yet, I know that your peace will always surpass understanding. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to have radical faith in you. You know why? Because faith does not eliminate questions. But faith knows where to take them. I want to repeat that for you this morning. Faith does not eliminate questions. I don't know about you, but I still got questions. I don't understand why God allows what he allows in my life. So faith doesn't eliminate the questions. I don't want want you to think that you're never going to have questions or ask God why. Because that's a connection to God. Why? Because faith knows where to take them. Your faith in your questions take you to God. Doesn't take you to people. It doesn't take you to vices. It shouldn't take you to temporary things. My faith questions in God takes me directly to him. So faith doesn't eliminate the questions in our lives, but faith knows where to take them. And radical faith in surrendering uh, control, Paul understood that one of the most profound acts of Paul's faith is is complete surrender to God's plan. Even when it meant abandoning his former life and status of influence as a Pharisee, Paul gave up everything to follow Christ to pursue the mission in spreading the gospel. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, Paul says this, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. And Paul's radical faith led him to value his relationship with Christ above all earthly Gains. His life was completely surrendered to calling, uh, the calling that God placed in, in him, demonstrating that through faith requires giving up control and trusting God's perfect plan. Radical faith uh, tells us that I can't do this on my own. Radical faith tells me that I, my plan is not greater than God's, that I have to give up control to God. You know, I, I've said before, you know, once upon a time I wanted to be a lawyer, then, then. And uh, um, I'm standing here you today as a, as a discipleship pastor at Fusion Church in ministry. So I don't think it went according to my plan. And this is where I am today. So uh, um, radical faith leads you to wanting to surrender control. I know some of us want to control everything. How many of you are control freaks here? Be honest. Everything has to go according to plan. And if somebody deviates, someone's going to get hurt. But when it comes to God, we have to be willing to surrender faith. Uh, Faith requires you to surrender, to say, man, this is what I want really bad. And God is saying no. And you're like, but I want it really bad. And God is saying, but I have something greater for you, but I want it really bad. You have to give up to gain that which God has. And for me, I want to tell you that I would rather be here today than be the lawyer that I wanted to be when I was 18, 19 years old. Surrendering means that God knows more, better for me. That God has better for me. That he has greater plans for me. That he knows what's best for me. That he wants to give me what's best for me. So I choose God. I choose faith in him that he knows my walk and I'm going to follow every step of the way that he's created for my life. Faith is is not a belief without proof. I want to tell you this morning. Faith is not a belief without proof. But it's trust without reservation. Which is I'm going to trust you God even when I don't understand. Even I don't know why you're doing what you're doing. I don't know why you're changing up my plans. I had this and I had this and I want to do this and I want to do that. And God is like, no, this is what I have. Trust is without reservation that no matter what you want, it would never be greater than what God wants to give. God's plan would always, always be on top of what I want to do in my life. God, I want to do this. What do you think about it? No, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ask. Please don't hit me. God knows more for me. That I know for myself. You know, radical faith is, is proclaiming uh, 
the gospel fearlessly. You know, Paul's boldness in preaching the gospel even under the threat of death uh, shows his radical faith. Whether before kings were in prison, Paul never wavered in his proclamation of Christ's message. Which means no matter what happens in your life, no matter what's happening, you're still going to proclaim Jesus. You know, you know uh, and, we, and I want to show you a little clip later of, of, of the show, the, the Chosen. How many of you watched The Chosen? And there's a part that I want to share with you that impacted me so much on the train that I actually adjusted a part of my message for it. I said, I got to use this. And I, and I heard it like nine times. I'm going to be honest with you. We're going to get how powerful it is because how you can preach the gospel even in the midst of your circumstance. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22 to 24, it says, And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardship are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying the good news of God's grace. Paul was willing to face prison. He was willing to face hardship and even death for the sake of proclaiming the gospel. His radical faith was grounded in belief that his mission was greater than his own life. And he pressed forward knowing, knowing that God's strength would sustain him. And, to, and Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says this. To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for. To be certain of the things we cannot see. There are things that you're not, you're not going to be able um, to see. And I believe I have a video for that. Right, Gabe? I hope. No, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. <laughs> The other one, the other one. <laughs> if he can find it. Yes, here we go. Sometimes we can't see, but God is there. And sometimes we don't think he's there. He's telling us to do something. And that's what faith demands. That if you can't see, God is able to say, hey, do what you need to do. Trust me, I got this. And it's all a step of faith. And maybe this morning, that's where you are. You need to take a step of faith. You need to move forward and you don't know what to do. And God is telling you, take a step of faith. And, and, and we're like, God, what? What do you want? I, I don't want, I, I don't know. I, I'm afraid. And God is telling you, take a step of faith. If you believe in me, Jesus says uh, to Martha, if you believe, didn't I tell you that you will see the glory of God? The, everything with Jesus has always been about faith and believing so that he can reveal himself to you. So that you can know him in aspects that you don't know him before. Maybe this morning you don't know who Jesus is. I want you to know that all God asks of you today is to believe. It's to have faith in Christ. Maybe you've given your life over to things that are temporary and have not, have not brought the peace, the love, the joy, the hope that you're looking for. I want you to know this morning you tried everything else. This morning God is asking you, try him. He can give you that hope, the forgiveness, the wholeness that you're looking for, the identity that you're looking for. Why am I here? Why do I exist? God is asking you, all you need to do is believe in me and, you, and I will show you who I am. Give God an opportunity this morning. Trust God in your weakness. Trust God in your difficulties. Trust God in all the circumstances of your life because radical faith uh, is moved within God's grace. Even in weakness, Paul displays Radical faith in, the, in, in his sufficiency in God's grace. He, he experienced a thorn in the flesh, a personal struggle or an affliction that he had. But instead of praying for its removal, he trusted that God's grace was enough to sustain him. After a while, he said, you know, God, I can't do this. God, this is my, I have a weakness. God, I, I'm not going to be able to fulfill this. God, you don't understand. God, 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 it was like, God basically told Paul, can for you for a minute can just be quiet. So that I can explain something to you. And then Paul gives us his explanation in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 and 10. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. 
for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sakes, I delight in my weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. What a great mystery that is. That when you are weak, God is strong. And many of us today may be praying for God to remove something, and God is like, relax. Relax. You can do it. You can do it. It may be difficult, and I may not remove this right now, or you might have to live with this. And I know some, some people are like, no, I don't, I don't want to live with this. And God is telling you, I got this. In your strength, you are capable. In God's strength, there's nothing impossible for you. Paul understood that, yes, I have to deal with this, but I know that God promised me that I'm going to be able to accomplish everything I need to accomplish. Why? Because Paul understood that he was relying on God, relying on his power, relying on his grace. And Paul understood that. He said, you know what? Because when I am weak, I get to see the revelation of God in my life. I get to see God work even in my weakness. I have an ability to see who God is even in In my weaknesses. And Paul's radical faith was not dependent on physical healing or relief from suffering, but grounded in the sufficiency of God's grace to carry him through every trial. I want you to know today that God is there through every trial in your life. You are not alone. And faith is not about everything turning out okay. Faith is about being okay no matter how things turn out. Not everything is going to be okay. God sometimes is going to say no. And I know that's difficult. God is going to say, no, this is not good for you. But you're like, but I need it. God's going to say, no, there's a reason why I'm not doing what you're asking me to do. Faith in God and radical faith is not about everything turning out okay. Faith is about being okay no matter how things turn out. It's understanding that no matter what I want, even if it's not going to happen, I am going to be okay because God is going to make it okay. So faith is not about being always 100% yes. There's going to be a no here and there. There's going to be, you're not going to be able to do this. No, I'm not going to allow it. And God is telling you, I'm doing this for a reason. Trust me. Believe that I got this. It's going to all turn out okay. And now I want, Gabe, you can put the chosen video up. And he's sending us out with the ability to heal the sick and lame. Yes, that, that is what you said. Yes. So you're telling me that I have the ability to heal. me I just find that difficult to imagine with my condition which you haven't healed do you want to be healed yes of course if, if that's possible I think you've seen enough to know it's possible In the Father's will, I could heal you right now. And you'd have a good story to tell, yes? Yes, that you do miracles. And that's a good story. But there are already dozens who can tell that story. And there will be hundreds more, even thousands. But think of the story that you have, especially in this journey to come. If I don't heal you, to know how to proclaim that you still praise God in spite of this, to know how to focus on all that matters so much more than the body, to show people that you can be patient with your suffering here on earth because you know you'll spend eternity with no suffering. Not everyone can understand that. That's amazing. To know that he wanted to be healed and Jesus says, everyone can tell that story. But imagine someone that is in your position to preach the gospel. And that you can be patient in your suffering. And and I want you to go back, if you can, to watch The Chosen Season 2. Because the whole conversation is about six minutes. I wish I had the whole conversation to show you. Where he tells them, imagine a lame man healing but not being healed, how powerful the words of the gospel will be in that way. Imagine that. And Jesus is saying you will be healed, but in your, tempor- in your temporary suffering will not be greater than the, it, you're going to be made whole in eternity. And he said in a, in a little while you, your, your suffering is going to end, 
but it's not going to be here on earth, but it's going to be in heaven where you're going to be whole for all eternity. And James was able to understand and to receive that and cry and say, you know what? You weigh, weigh the differences. And sometimes we have to weigh what God is trying to say. You're not going to get what you want. But Jesus is saying, if you just hold on a little longer, you're going to see what I'm going to do. If you can just be patient today. And I'm not telling you to wait, that you're going to wait for eternity. But I'm, I, what Jesus is telling you, if you can just trust me right now in what you're not getting. And you're saying it's too much. God is telling you, trust me. Have this radical faith in me because I'm going to work. But there's a purpose and a reason for what you're going through, what you're going through today. And maybe your life today has taken you through ups and downs and turns and, and all these things. And you don't know what happened and mistakes were made. And, and you find yourself in the most difficult circumstances. And you're here today. I want you to know that your life has brought you to Jesus if you don't know him today. Hearing the gospel and being in his presence, sometimes things in this life, whether you understand them or not, things are not always going to be okay, but I want you to know that God's, gonna, God's going to guide you through every step of the process. And James was able to not only ask, but also understand that this is just for a little while. And radical faith is to be able to, to let go and to release and to allow God to do what God needs to do. And radical faith is embracing weakness. Paul understood that God's strength was made in his, in his weakness in the same way that James was going to find out that God's strength was in his weakness because uh, um, a, a, a famous author wrote, faith opens the door for God to work in us and through us even in, in our imperfections. And I don't know if you know this author, but there's a picture of him up there. If, if it, I don't know who that is. <laughs> who is this guy? Who is that guy? You know, and, 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 and transparency, you know, I, I have weaknesses that sometimes they're the best of me. You know, what we, well, one of the weaknesses that I have in faith and believe in God is me standing up here. Sometimes I don't feel I'm sufficient enough. Now, sometimes I feel like they're, you know, maybe I'm not qualified or I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. Sometimes I feel, even within myself, am, am I doing this right? Am this is correct? Am, am I preaching correctly? Am I do and sometimes I have to be reminded that in, even in my weaknesses, I need to know that God is strong. That he's going to give me the strength to do it. That he's going to give me the knowledge, the ability to do to my best. Not to be anybody else but Angel Maldonado was created for this and by this for God. That you have to trust God and that what he's calling you to do. Therefore, I will boast all more gladly in my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me, Paul says. And radical faith is in transformation. Paul's, Paul's conversion is one of the most radical transformations in scripture. Acts chapter 9 verse 4 through 6 says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Now get up into the city and you will be told what you must do. Can God change you? Yes, he can. Can God change your perception, your, your perspective on how you see things to believe in him? God can change your mind. God can change your thoughts. God can change your direction and your walking through today. But you got to give God an opportunity and have faith that he knows what he's doing. And it may be hard. It may be difficult. And you're saying the burdens are strong. I don't know where to go. And, and God is telling you, seek my faith. Seek me and faith. I'm going to guide you. God can change you. That's a question. Can God change you? He can change you. He can change your circumstances. He can change your life. But just remember, and God has to do it in the way he plans and not the way we want him to do it. Which means that we're going to be walking through difficulties and struggles and we're going to have hardship. Jesus said in this life, you will have many tribulations, but take heed that I have overcome the world. Just to surrender your life to him this morning. Can God change your circumstance? Can God change your pain? Can God change your hurt? Can God change your loneliness? Can God change your isolation? Yes, but God is asking you, bring it to me and let me work in your life. Do you believe that God can change you? That's a question that you would ask this morning and answer it. Maybe you don't know Jesus today. They have been looking for a total transformation and everything you tried has failed. Try Jesus. He can and he will change your life. All through our scripture, we see transformations and changes of God that God has done. We have Peter, after being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, he went from being afraid to admit his association with Jesus to boldly proclaiming the good news on, on the day of Pentecost. Can God change? He changed Peter's life. Je God changed, Jesus changed the life of the Samaritan woman who went to the world and had a discussion for him. She ran back and said, I met the Messiah, the ones that we're talking about, and he told me all, all everything about my life. Can God change your life? He can change your life. God changed uh, the life of the thief on the cross. 
He looked at him and he didn't see a thief. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. Why? Because a thief had faith in Jesus and said, please don't forget me. And Jesus goes, don't worry. Today you will be with me in paradise. Can God change your circumstances? He can change. There is not one person in scripture that came to Jesus in faith and left differently. The Bible says that he had, uh, many times, he had compassion on them. He had mercy on them. The woman with the, with the flowing of blood, she said, my only opportunity is Jesus. She jumped, touched the cloak, and she was healed completely. Why? Because faith moves the hand of God. God is compassionate. He's merciful. He cares. He loves. He wants to, he wants to make himself known uh, in our lives. You know, and, and, and radical faith and evangelizing to those who don't know Jesus because of the light that's in you. In Romans chapter 15, verse 20, Paul says, It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. And in Acts chapter 16, we see that Paul and Silas are in the deepest part of the dungeon. They're, they're shackled. And after a trial, they throw, they throw him into the dungeon in the deepest part of the prison. And chapter 16, verse 27 says, the jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for the lights, rushed in, and, and trembling before Paul and Silas, he then brought them out and asked, sir, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. And immediately he and all the household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God and his whole household. Your circumstances can actually speak volumes to those who don't know Jesus. To be able to be faithful in the midst of persecution, to be, able to be faithful in the midst of your problems, to demonstrate to people why is it that this person is still worshiping God while going through circumstances. I don't understand. Why? Because we serve a God that even in the midst of difficulties, Paul and Silas showed while they were, while they were in the deepest part of the dungeon, they began to pray and sing songs to God. And what did God do? There was an earthquake and they were released and they were set free. The ability to know God in your darkest hour, the ability to trust God when you don't have food on the table, so the ability to trust God when your child is sick and you can't do anything for them, the ability to trust God when you don't know what's happening around you, the ability to trust God when everything seems to crumble, that's when, that's when you can able to lift up your hands and say, God, I don't know what's going on, but I trust you. You are God. You are all-knowing. You are all-powerful, and I guarantee you, just like Paul, God is going to show up in your life. He's a faithful God, and those who don't know Jesus will come to know the God that you serve. The ability to be faithful even in the most difficult circumstances of your life. Because radical faith is, is persevering through hardship, and Paul went through hardship. We all have gone through hardship. Maybe this morning you are going through a, through a hardship. And Paul pre presents it like this in 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 27. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pulled, uh, pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea. His radical faith kept him going despite the extreme hardships he faced. He trusted in God's purposes and that were greater than his suffering. And in Acts chapter 16, uh, it says, Once they were going to a place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money from her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you a way to be saved. She kept up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. When, he, when her owners realized that, that their hope of making money was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and they are throwing our city into an uproar. By advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice, the crowd joined and attacked Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet with stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone in chains came loose, which is a story backwards of what I just told you. just wanted to set that up for you. 
not only did they believe in God and someone was saved, but their, 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 their radical faith in God, I don't know about you, but being tied down and being in locks, to, to be able at that moment to just begin to worship God and say, you know what, God, I, I don't know what I'm going to do right now, but I'm just going to just be quiet and I'm just going to worship you. His commitment was, was so impressive, and his radical faith in rejoicing in, in suffering. Paul says in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 31 through 39, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave up all for us, he will, not, will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies who, who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died, and more than that, who was raised. Who is, that, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or the sword? As it is written, for, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, that we are more than conquerors. Can you say conquerors? Through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is nothing, nothing that's going to separate you. Those who are faithful to God and those who are given and trusting him in all things. And I say all things, in all circumstances, because radical faith is seen in the unseen. Now faith is the assurance of the things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. For, by, for, for it by the, the old men gained, old men of age gained approval. I don't, see old, I, want, I don't just want to see old men. 2 Corinthians 4.18, so we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but is what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Paul's radical faith focused on eternal realities, not on, not on the troubles of this world. You know, Martin Luther King said, we must have the faith that things will work out somehow and that God will make a way for us even when there seems no way. That God's going to figure it out. Not me. God's going to figure it out in my life. You know, radical faith, uh, Paul had radical faith in the resurrection and in the future and what was going to happen and where we we're going to end up. Faith, faith leads me to understand that no matter what the struggles that we're dealing with in this world, it's nothing compared to what we're going to have in eternity. To the, to the joy of being with God for all eternity in his presence and his peace and his love. To believe that God is working it out so that I will one day be in his presence joyful, happy. I'm going to be made whole. I probably won't be skinny anymore. I probably will have hair. Come on, guys. This is sad. I'm starting to feel pain in my arms, and people at work tell me it's the age. I'm like, dude, I'm 47. He goes, yeah, that's where it starts. <laughs> the things that we deal with in this life, to be able to trust God, that even if he doesn't, he's still God. Those are what the three friends said before King Nebuchadnezzar. Even if he doesn't save us from the fire, we're not going to bow down and worship your God. Even if God doesn't do it, I'm not going to turn to something else. Even if God doesn't change the circumstance right now, I'm not going to try to do it myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to live out my faith. I'm going to live it out the way God asks me to live it out, which I'm going to have faith in him. I'm going to cry if I have to cry. I'm going to shout if I have to shout. I'm going to carry my pain, but I know that God is going to do something about it. The same way James encountered Jesus and said, you know what, I, I, come on, man, why are you not doing this? Sounds like a pretty good question. And Jesus goes, well, there's a purpose for that. God does not waste your pain. God does not waste your circumstances. If you trust and believe in God, Jesus tells Martha, if you believe, didn't I promise you? Didn't I tell you? Didn't I reassure you that my words are true, that you will see the glory of God? And he, then he told Lazarus to come forth. And they were like, whoa. Okay, he, he ain't lying. God is not a God that lies. His word is true and it's faithful. And at the core of Paul's faith was to believe that in the resurrection of Jesus, his entire ministry was founded on the conviction that Christ's resurrection was proof that God's ultimate victory over sin and over death. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17 says that if Christ had not been raised, your faith is futile, yet you, you are still in your sins. And the resurrection of Jesus authenticated all that he did and all that he said. Paul's radical faith was anchored in the resurrection, which shaped his view of life, death, and eternity. In Paul's life, it exemplifies a radical faith through perseverance, through surrender, through bold proclamation, and the resilience on God's grace. His faith was not swayed by circumstances, but rooted in a deep abiding trust in God's promises. Just as Paul was willing to endure persecution, give up his former life, and trust, God, trust God's grace and weakness, we are too called to live out radical faith that is steadfast even when the path is uncertain. And Martin Luther King says, you don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. And maybe today that's what we need to do. You may not have to see the whole plan. You may not know the whole plan. You may not know what God is doing. You may not know what's the purpose of your pain or what's the purpose of your struggle or, or what's the purpose of what you're going through today. But I want you to know that all God is asking you to do is take that first step of faith and let him do the rest. If you can just believe like a mustard seed, faith like a mustard seed, God tells us that the mountain will be moved, that your circumstances will be moved. And even, even, if, it, even if it's not, God is telling you it's going to work out for good. One of, the, one of the most difficult verses in Scripture to, to understand, and I want to tell you as, as a student of the Word and as trying to find out who God is, like Francis Chang said, trying to find who he is in different perspectives, that one verse I will, I will always find to be a, minute, a mystery is that verse, that all things work out for good. Because sometimes I look, at, I look at God, I God, I have no idea why you had him write that. Because right now in this circumstance today, you might be saying the same thing. In my marriage breaking up, Where's the good? In my kids' relationships with me, where's the good, God? It's not, I don't see it working out for good. In my sickness, God, where is it working out for good? In my unemployment, God, I don't see it working out for good. In my, in my sickness, I don't know. And you can keep going on and on and on. But God promises me that in my struggles, in all those situations, it's going to work out for good. And what God asks me to do is to believe and say, you don't need to know it all. Nosy, you don't need to see it all. All God is asking you to do is what Paul said, that you fix your eyes on the author and consumer of your face, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Look to me and forget about the things that are around you. Look to me and don't focus on your ship crashing. Look to me and don't, don't stare at the issues because if you stare at it, you're going to be like Peter when I told him to walk off the boat. You're going to sink. But if you focus on me, if you trust in me, if you look at me, you're going to see me work at it little by little according to my plan and my purpose in my life. But you know what? That takes radical faith. To trust God in all things, to get hands off. Let me handle it. Hands off. You know why? Because a lot of the things that I've done on my own, I've done messed it up. You know, it's funny because I'm not handy around the house. My wife reminded me, remind me about that yesterday. I'm not handy around the house. And I don't know what I'm doing. But in the same way, I'm hands off with the stuff in the house. Let me be hands off with the stuff in my life. Let God work through it. Let, let God do it. Let God reconstruct your marriage. Let God help you reconstruct your relationship. Let God work in that which you're asking him uh, to work. So, this, so this, this morning, I actually trust God. Have faith uh, in God. And as we wrap up this message, I know for the last, we heard about our transition from uh, on October 6th. We're going to be in the, in the new uh, theater temporarily because our goal is to come back to Fishkill and I want to let you know that throughout this whole process God has been faithful I know Pastor Armando shared about donorships and people that have given and people that are giving and, and they're, they're, they want to share and they want to be part of Fusion Church I want you to know that God is behind the scenes let me tell you I just told Pastor Armando when he gives me news I go oh now he's just showing off but that's what God does God has been faithful to Fusion Church and as we, as we temporarily on the theater and wait for this location that we're, we're just right there, right there. Again, God has not failed us. God will not fail us. This is, this is faith, guys, to believe that God is doing. And we're going to get to the place that we prayed for when we first started. God is faithful. And the same God that is faithful to Fusion Church is faithful to you. So as you 
as you prepare you and, and you want to share and want to give, I want you to know that you are being part of God's faithfulness to Fusion Church. And God is going to do what he promised. And we're going to glorify God. We're going to thank God. We're going to praise God. And we're going to be excited for what God is going to do in Fusion Church. How many of you believe that this morning? So let's pray. If you need prayer this morning, we're going to have people praying on the left and on the right hand side. Prayer warriors, I want to pray with you. I don't know what your circumstances are this morning. I don't know what you're dealing with this morning. I don't know your struggles. But what God calls you to do this morning, church, is to believe in him and to have faith in him that he will do. Father, we thank you, God, this morning. Lord, we thank you, God, for your love, your mercy, and your word, my God. Thank you for what you are doing, my God. Thank you for what you are continuing to do, Lord, in us and through us, Lord. I pray for each and every person in this room, Lord. You know their struggles. You know their battles, my God. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that they may trust you, God. Even in the midst of pain, in the midst of difficulty, in the, dif in the midst of whatever struggles they're battling right now. It may be difficult, Lord, for them. Lord, but I pray, God, that they may know that you don't waste pain, my God. Lord, that you are for us, that you are with us, that you are a compassionate God, a merciful God, Lord. And that you are going to help us through. Lord, I pray for anyone in this room that doesn't know you today, Lord. I pray that today may be the day that they put their faith and trust in you, Lord. Lord, that today is the day that they may encounter Jesus in their lives, my God. A transformative Jesus. The same way you transformed the life of Paul. The same way you transformed many lives in this room, my God. Lord, I pray that you may change them as well. That you may transform them as well, my God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.